Hi everyone and welcome back to Book Break. I'm Simon. I'm not Jean, you're right, she's got a much better beard than me. But Jean and the lovely folk at Pam Macmillan asked if I would do a video on five LGBTQ books that you should read before, around Pride or after Pride, as well as five LGBTQ places you might want to head to if you are in London for the Pride weekend this weekend. So we're going to head to London shortly, but for now let's get on with the books, shall we? Yes, we shall. And the first one is What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. Now this is now in paperback and has a slightly different cover, however the insides are still the same, I'm assured. And this is the story of an unnamed narrator who moves to Bulgaria where he teaches English and in the public toilets below, I believe it's a cultural museum, he finds Mitko who is a sex worker and they have a moment, shall we say, uh, and from then they're kind of drawn into this bizarre tale of obsession and you never really know who is cat and who is mouse. It's quite a short book, you'll rip through it and it gives a very, very frank, honest and unflinching look at how far we can go for obsession and sex and lust and it's absolutely brilliant. Next up I've cheated slightly because Pages For You by Sylvia Brownring is followed by Pages For Her by Sylvia Brownring and I'm going to count them as one book, let me explain why. Pages For You is a novel about Flannery and a woman called Anne. And Flannery is at college and she's not long started and she decides she's going to take herself out for breakfast where she orders a jelly omelette. As she's ordering that she locks eyes with a woman and there's this kind of electric instant thing between them. Then when she gets to college she soon discovers that that is Anne and that's one of her tutors. From that point there's this kind of slight coy relationship with them before a relationship starts which, and it says it on the back so I'm not spoiling anything and it's still worth reading, is doomed pretty much from the off. Then, 20 years later, ta-da, here is Pages for Her which follows Flannery and Anne where they are 20 years on when something is bringing them back together. Flannery is now married, she's got children and Anne's off doing her own thing and they are brought back together for a literary event, which I liked because books. I thought these two were absolutely marvellous and what I loved about them is that I felt like, and the reason that I've included them as one, is that I felt like this was a whole life experience with these two women. I feel like I've lived their lives with them. And this very much features on the lesbian relationship, but what's interesting about Pages for her is that it looks at bisexuality, which I think is a subject we still don't talk enough about, and we should be. Two in one. Then I have a book that I haven't read, but I am planning on reading over the summer because I think it's really important, and it also won the Green Carnation Prize for LGBTQ writing, which is a prize that I founded. How to Survive a Plague, the story of how activists and scientists tamed AIDS by David France. Now, from what I gather, this is an absolutely fascinating, horrifying, yet uplifting story of how people took on the AIDS epidemic. This is something that I don't feel I know enough about in my own LGBTQ history as a gay man. And so I really, really want to go and find out what happened to gay men in the past when this epidemic broke out. I know bits of it, I've read it in various different uh, fictions, however this is using accounts from real people at the time. I'm going to be gripped by it apparently, because apparently it reads like a thriller, even though obviously it isn't a thriller in any shape or form. It's quite a junkster, I think it's going to be one that I read a few chapters of before I go to bed every night over the summer months. Now we go to two books that aren't Picador books, and they said I could choose non Picador books, I promise. The first one is Juno Dawson's Agenda Games. This is a fantastic and fascinating book about Juno's transitioning and how she feels about the transitioning process but then how she feels about gender as someone who has been both male and female and it's funny, it's uplifting, it makes you ask questions that you don't think you even have and it's just I thought it was a really positive and again I came away from this book feeling really empowered. If you want some empowerment and indeed some girl power because there's lots of Spice Girls in this then I would recommend you rush to that very very soon. And finally from me is a classic and I chose this because this is a book that when I was a young gay boy who was still battling all their own different thoughts and feelings and all the shenanigans that come with those and all the hormones, I read Tales of the City by Armstead Morpan and I have loved this book ever since and will love it forever. It's about the cast of characters who end up in 28 Barbary Lane where it is run by Mrs. Madrigal, who's this fabulous, I want to say camp matriarch is how I put it. Uh, we follow Marianne Singleton, who is quite new to San Francisco, and so some of the things that she sees are a little bit eye-opening to her and a little bit daunting. And we follow her as she kind of goes through all these different walks of life, meeting all these amazing characters of all sexualities, all backgrounds, all races, the whole works. And it just made me feel like I could be accepted too. And it was really important for that. So I cannot recommend Tales of the City enough. So those are the five, six, 
LGBTQ books that I would recommend around Pride. Now, if you're in London for Pride, we're going to skip over to London now, together, holding hands, it's going to be beautiful, to have a wander around, and I'm going to show you five places that I would really recommend you head to if you get the chance. So our number one spot is Trafalgar Square, which you can see behind me, famous lines further back. Um, and this is where the Pride Parade will go past, somewhere over that way, I think. And then there'll be a stage in the main uh, area for dancing and fun and merriment and celebrating all things LGBTQ+, in this area here. So make sure you check that out. Now we're going to walk around the corner for a little bit and head to uh, destination number two, Old Compton Street. So now we're at Old Compton Street, which has a wonderful array of gay bars, pubs, restaurants, shops, the works. I'm going to point out some of my favourites. Here's JAY Bar, where you can drink all night long to pop music. Drinks for a pound, but drink responsibly, kids. And here we are at the Admiral Duncan, which is one of the oldest gay bars in London and the scene of the dreadful attacks of 1999. The Baron Soho Society has some of the best food in London. And then we end up my favourite, the Duke of Wellington or the Welly, just there. Around the corner on Brewer Street you'll find a lovely street food market and Prowler, a shop I used to work at and sells all sorts of shenanigans and gifts. Now for our third stop, something completely different in Pimlico, the wonderful Tate Britain and the Queer British Art 1861 to 1967. So I couldn't film in the Tate, however it is absolutely brilliant, I've been twice now and the exhibition's fab. Um, it starts with the 1860s and the kind of Victorian influence of the classic stories and obviously in the older classic civilization time anything went pretty much. And then it goes on to things like Oscar Wilde's prison cell and then it goes on to the Bloomsbury set and all the shenanigans that they got up to including obviously Virginia Woolf so that's really really interesting and um, there's the Kenneth Halliwell and Joe Orton um, library books that they've kind of done all those naughty things to when they deface them and then you've also got things like Noel Cow's dressing room you've got a front dressing room dressing gown uh, Francis Bacon's work and then all stuff getting more contemporary so it's absolutely brilliant I heartily 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 recommend you go now I couldn't film the exhibition but I could film in the shop where there's some gorgeous things that you can get. Books, gifts, the works and uh, make sure you have time for some cake at the end because uh, the cake in the Tate is absolutely fantastic. And now for our penultimate stop we're off to Vauxhall and the Vauxhall Tavern, one of London's most famous and eldest pubs. And it's actually built in the 1860s when it was rumoured to be a um, music hall but it actually wasn't, it was a pub from the off. There you go and uh, it's still going strong despite the fact that it was nearly closed in 2006 but thanks to a petition from the owners and from the venue it was saved along with the help of the Lord Mayor. Apparently once Princess Diana went dressed as a man with Freddie Mercury so there's a little bit of fascinating fact for you. And on to our final stop Gaze the Word, which is one of my favourite bookshops in London. You can find all sorts of new LGBTQ books on their shelves, as well as biographies, non-fiction, and it's divided into lesbian fiction as well as gay fiction. There's literally a plethora of books here that you'll love. And now we're back here. So those are the places that I would recommend that you head to if you're headed to London for Pride, or if you're headed to London for any reason, head to Gaze the Word and shop, shop, shop till you drop. There's loads of fantastic books there. And another two places I'd recommend if you have time are the Cadogan Hotel, where you can stay in room 118 and that is the room that Oscar Wilde got arrested in as well as going to Highgate Cemetery and checking out the resting place of Radcliffe Hall. That's it for me. I just want to on behalf of everyone at Bookbreak wish you all a very very happy pride. I hope you have a wonderful one wherever it is, whatever you're doing. Uh, yeah, bye.